Hi, so we're having another windy day, which means the door is rattling and it also means that my mind is still on wind turbines. In a previous video, we made this thing. Uh, we made this thing out of a car fan. It's a wind turbine, obviously. Now, on the comments, somebody said, how would you do that with a washing machine? And I thought that was a really cool idea. Because um, a washing machine has got something in it called a universal motor. And I used to think the universal motor meant they were everywhere. And it kind of does, because they are everywhere. But it also means that they'll run on AC or DC. And you can do that just by connecting up one universal motor to DC and seeing it run. Um, they're normally about sort of 110, 230 volts, depending on your country. Um, so they don't run particularly quickly, but if you stick about 30 volts DC in, you'll get the motor to run. So, there we go, 23 volts it starts to turn. We're at 30 volts now. Apparently that's why they're called universal motors. However, the other idea of them, them being everywhere, also holds true. You will find them in everything. Uh, drills, jigsaws, uh, mixers, uh, washing machines. They're just about everywhere. So I'm going to do a jigsaw, because I have, uh, have one here, but I also have a broken one. And I'm going to do the jigsaw, because the motor that's in the jigsaw is identical to the motor in all those other bits of equipment. So you're doing exactly the same thing. So there's the top off of it. There's the on-off switch right there. That's the start capacitor. Here's the lead coming in. That's the motor stator. That's the rotor here. You can see the commutator and the brushes. There's the brushes, there's the commutator. There's the bearing, the rear bearing here, that's a fan. The front bearing is here and then it's connected through a worm to this um, cog here. And that cog has a peg going onto it that's connected to this bit of metal, just there. And that's called a scotch yoke. And what that does is turn the reciprocating motion into an up and down motion, which obviously is how your jigsaw works. Now, I've sawn up the jigsaw and you can see I've just taken this section out. I've sawn everything else out to give me the jigsaw bit because I want to put the um, motor back in there because it's a moulded case and the motor fits in there with the brushes and everything and I want it back. So I've just sawn out the body, taken it apart and here is the guts of a universal motor. And that's what they always look like. So they've got a rotor, which is wire round with a, com a commutator, and they've got a stator. And the stator's a couple of coils, and you'll see two wires going in, two wires going in, so it's two coils. Uh, and then sometimes, like this one, they're wired directly to the brushes that feed the commutator. Now, we can make these into generators by using the same ideas that you would do when you have an alternator. Now, in an alternator, you use slip rings to make the ro rotor one great big magnet. So the slip rings feed plus and minus continually, creating a massive magnet, and that rotates and inside the coils, and those coils become AC. But we can swap that over, we can just feed that current into here, and then get this to rotate, and this will generate AC through the brushes, if we fill, uh, feed a DC current into this. Now obviously, it matters which way around they go, because that needs to be north, and that needs to be south. And they have to stay constantly north and south, while this thing spins in them. But it's not too difficult, and handily enough, we have a couple of wires coloured black and blue, which is a bit awesome. And you want to snip those off somewhere sensible, because we do want the brushes. Remember, they're going to be the collection point for the AC generation. So if I snip those off, and strip them back, and I'm looking for something to strip it with, which I can't see for the life in me. Ah, there it is. <laughs> and if we put a DC power supply down that, we have effectively an electromagnet. Now, as I say, these were originally wound for 110, 240 volts, so the wires are quite fine, so at low voltages aren't going to be... Um, particularly onerous or dangerous. It'll take a bit of going actually to get a low voltage through it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to attach a battery to each of these and I've got a compass and I'm hoping that's going to tell me which way around they are depending on how I connect these up. So let's get some clips on there. And one to plus, one to minus. 
stick the minus in there and we're dealing with that one at the moment and stick the plus on and we should get deviation in the compass and lo and behold okay that way around I'm getting a north if I swap them yep that way around I'm getting a south so if I connect the positive to blue and the negative to black, I get a south. So let's try this one. We'll put the negative to blue this time and the positive to black. Remember we've got a south pole on here so we want a north pole on here. South Pole, so swap them over. North Pole, awesome! So it looks like if we just connect those together and those together, we'll get the right orientation. So we need to connect those two together, solder an extra wire on so it can come out of the case, put a current in there and we'll have our electromagnet. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Okay, so here it is reassembled. The stator here has been wired up to be an electromagnet and those are the black and the red wires. So I'm gonna feed a DC current down there. And then the two brushes have been wired, um, soldered to these two white wires because that's our AC pickup. So what we've basically done is transform that universal motor into effectively an alternator. So now all I need to do is close it up Put some voltage on and see if it works. Okay, so I've attached a drill to give me a bit of power and I've got the leads attached to the AC reading on the AC reading and if I spin this I will get a voltage. It's tiny. But the reason for that is the electromagnet that we set up there has some residual magnetism and that residual magnetism is causing a current when we spin the coil in it. Now if we connect it to a battery then we are in fact energizing that electromagnet that we made and we get a higher current out of it. Considerably higher actually. It was 0 0.03 of a volt without the battery and 0.4 of a volt with the battery. I mean we are putting a 6 volt battery on there so we're not going to get an awful lot out of it considering this was meant for 230 volts. However, the first thing that comes to mind is big whoop. It's not really that impressive, is it? But if we take something else, and this is a rectifier. So if we take the rectifier and connect it to our AC output. Let's check which one's the AC. There it is. then if we were passing AC down here, we would get DC back out. So we could connect that up to the DC supply for the field coils. Now it won't quite work yet. We need to give it something to kick it off, some kind of energy store. Now you can use a battery, you can use a capacitor. I've got a, a super capacitor here, it's 2.7 volts at 500 farads. So although it's got a deal of energy, the voltage isn't very high, so again we're not going to get a very high voltage. But if you have a capacitor there at say uh, 50 volts at 10,000 microfarads, that's going to be an ideal one. This is just to demonstrate it really. And if we connect the capacitor in there, We need to put an initial charge on the capacitor. Once you have an initial charge on the capacitor, then that capacitor will feed the field coil and that will set up a alternating current within the uh, rotor and that will self-perpetuate depending on the speed of the input. I put a little bit of charge on here, not enough to actually hurt, but enough there. And 
And what you actually see with that is the voltage gradually going up as that capacitor becomes charged and then feeds back into the field coil. The strength of the field gets uh, bigger because the strength of the field is increasing. The rotation is the same. We get more output. And so we get a circular um, thing happening where this builds up into its output power to the limit of the supercapacitor. So anyway, that's how you go about converting a universal motor into an alternator style generator and also how you would get the alternator style generator to generate all by itself. You do need a kickstart with something like a capacitor or a battery but you just need to kickstart it first. I mean I've connected the capacitor, you could actually just connect a battery, flip a switch, get it going, flip the switch off. Something along those lines. But that's how to get that working. Anyway, uh, the same principles apply for this thing as much as a washing machine motor or a drill motor or any of these universal motors. That's what you do with it. And that's how you turn it into a generator. I thought I would share that with you because specifically I was asked to. I hope it was of interest and thank you very much for watching.